more in tax than you need to. Is your health plan contributing to it? You betcha. Today I'll show you how and give you a quick map of how to stop it. My name is Allison DePauli and I started Altik Consulting to help employers like you take control of your healthcare spend and get budgeting predictability with a happy side effect of better access to high quality care and lower out of pocket costs for your employees. If you like what you find here, subscribe to my YouTube channel down here somewhere, hit the notifications bell and we'll let you know when we upload new videos. I was reading an article in the October issue of CFO Magazine by Gregory Schooley titled Moving Beyond Quick Fixes to Sustainable Value Creation. He recommended CFOs to lead the focus on these areas to achieve long-term stability. Costs of goods sold, real estate, consumer and product optimization, labor productivity. The other two items jumped out at me, indirect taxes and working capital. We'll link to the article below if you want to read it. Schooley posits that indirect taxes can represent up to 25% of total personnel costs, and I'm going to take him at his word on that. And I'm going to add one item he didn't include, healthcare. We are going to go back to Medicare for just a second to explain how employers, the commercial insurance market, pays an indirect tax. Medicare was designed to help hospitals, mostly hospitals, cover their costs for delivering care to senior citizens, mostly. It wasn't designed to be an income stream. It was designed to just cover the cost of care. Hospitals and outpatient facilities and other providers can't survive on that. It's just not possible. Facility costs are growing every year, new equipment, highly trained personnel, new buildings, fixed staffing costs if the hospital is occupied or not, and the list goes on. It's a pretty thorny problem which impacts many areas of our economy, and that is a subject for another video. And I'm not picking on hospitals. However, they are one of the largest components of your healthcare budget. Hospitals and outpatient facilities, often owned by hospital systems, drive about 50% of your healthcare budget. So how do they balance their budget? Keep up with the needs of their community and serve all of their constituents. They charge the commercial market, individual and employer-based health plans, a higher amount. Think of it like a retail versus a wholesale cost. The retail cost is often listed on something called a charge master. That is an incredibly complicated menu of all the services a facility offers. In theory, a PPO network negotiates a discount from the regular fee. PPOs were originally designed to drive volume. A PPO network was a smaller number of providers in a geographic area. Providers offered a discount for a volume of patients. Now, most PPOs include all the major facilities in a given area, minus the odd spitting contest that you see in the newspaper, and that discount is not quite applicable anymore. How a PPO network works and to whose advantage it works has changed over time. If you want to hear about that, let me know in the comments. So where is the indirect tax? It's in the PPO discount. Let's just agree that a facility cannot survive on Medicare. Hospitals, particularly community hospitals, are not the enemy here. But, and it is a big but, do facilities need three or five or eight or even 20 times the Medicare reimbursement level to survive? I will argue no, and that that is the indirect tax to employers. I imagine your next question is, how do I fix it? Is it even fixable? Yes, it is. There are several strategies, some you may have heard of and some probably not, to help eliminate the excess cost and not make life harder on your internal team or your employees. We'll drop links for those videos too. And now that last item, working capital. Capital is not necessarily plentiful or cheap right now. Most employers need to carefully manage their cash. By controlling the cost of care, you can conserve your cash. Think of controlling the cost of care like you think of managing your account's payable process. Apply those practices and you should be able to hang on to your working capital a bit longer. And every pink thing counts right now, I think. If you're interested in leveling the playing field and making your healthcare plan work for you and your employees, 
If you're interested in saving your plan significant dollars, click the link below and let's talk.